Hey there, welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Francine Sinclair. I've been around the block in the entrepreneurial world, creating and repurposing social media content for experts and CEOs. I know firsthand how it can feel lonely, especially when you're mixing your Christian faith into your business life. So I figured, why should we go it alone? Who said that faith and business can't mix? And that's where this podcast comes in. Join me as we meet influential Christian entrepreneurs who are showing us how to blend business and faith in a way that works. We're here to prove that you can express your faith without compromising your business success. On the Influential Christian Entrepreneur, you're not just listening, you're part of the gang. So let's start this journey together. Welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur Podcast, where we uncover the inspiring stories and strategies of successful Christian entrepreneurs. Before we get started today, I just wanted to invite you, if you are a Christian CEO seeking to authentically integrate your faith and business in your social media content for the purpose of inspiring more people to Christ, contact me at hello at francinesinclair.com. The harvest is vast, but the laborers are few, as many of you know. And as Christians in the marketplace, it is our job to spread the gospel by any means necessary. When you and I work together, we will leverage your influence and your personal brand, not just to talk about business, but to tell others about the good news right where they are. Mm. And where are they? They are in the marketplace. And for sure, they're definitely on social media, particular, especially LinkedIn. So you guys know where to reach me. Hello at FrancineSinclair.com. And today I have an amazing guest that I met through a dear friend by the name of uh, Mark Goldman. And he introduced me to this gentleman here. We're interviewing Mr. Daryl Lyons. He is an author, entrepreneur. He's a community leader and family man. Daryl Lyons is a certified financial planner, behavioral financial advisor, and a co-founder of Pax Financial Group. It's a financial advisory firm that honors Judeo-Christian values and helps high net worth individuals and families pursue their meaning of true wealth. An expert in the area of personal finance, Daryl is also the author of several books on the subject matter, including his bestseller, 18 to 80, a simple and practical guide to money and retirement for all ages. Daryl's life mission is to create a legacy with people as they grow their wealth. Welcome, Daryl. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. It's a good Friday. Thank you for being here. So, Daryl, let's get started. I'm curious about your background. Where are you from? And did you grow up a Christian? Are you a cradle Christian? Mm-hmm. Or did you become a Christian later on in life? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, a little bit of a challenging childhood. We didn't have money. Uh, my mom had me when she was 16. My dad was 20. And so you can imagine the challenges that come with that. And they were they came from broken families. And so they had to navigate their way through life. And so there were successes and then there was um, failures along the way uh, and the, the manifested into money challenges. And so those money challenges, I was very observant of, and it influenced um, where I'm at today, very much so. Um, but one of the things about my mom that was pretty unique is that she just loved Jesus. So we would go to church. I went to a Baptist church in a small town called Bernie, Texas, and fell in love with uh, Jesus at age 12. And uh, my walk was just a peculiar one, but not uncommon. Um, but we navigated different churches along the way as we moved. We moved a, quite a bit. So I went from a a Baptist church. And then in my high school years, we went to somewhat of a Pentecostal church, which is, you know, running up and down the aisles. It was great. Yeah. And then I went to Catholic college, St. Mary's university. So I got to enjoy the mass. And, and so then when I became an adult, I just started to, to, uh, to gravitate towards the Bible church. And that's where I'm at today. But I have, uh, I was a Christian at age 12. And then I really started to discover the power of Jesus Christ as an adult and really started to become endeared to the idea of abiding in him and what that really meant in my life and trusting in him. Prior to that, it was mostly um, rooted in kind of this, um, uh, I'm going to do life. I'm going to work hard. My attitude is mental toughness, extra effort. 
with God's help along the way. And that, that works up until a point, but then there became this inflection point in my adult year where I really understood what it meant when he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So there was this, there was this idea that I had um, earned salvation at a young age at 12, but I really understood what it meant to have the, the life that is, that is truly life as an adult. So long answer to a short question, but I hope that helps. So when did you tell me about your business? When did you, did you start your working years in a corporate environment working for someone else? And then you started this company or how did that uh, start for you? Yeah. So um, when I was about 17 or 18, I was um, edging the skirting of our mobile home. And so you got to be very careful because when you edge the skirting of a mobile home, you could crack the skirting. It's plastic. And so I thought, man, it would be nice to have a house someday with a foundation like concrete. And I remember the banker in, in, um, in Castroville, Texas that we were living at, at then, they had a nice foundation. So I thought, well, let me go into banking. And so I worked at a Bank of America all through college. That's how I paid my way through school. Graduated, got a degree in accounting, another one in finance, and then jumped into a corporate career where I really earned um, my stripes, so to speak. And I mm-hmm. and I was able to understand a lot more about business, um, the sales process, managerial process. I was at a big company, partner of the year, rookie of the year, and I was moving up to maybe Chicago or New York eventually. But I, you know, San Antonio is home for me, and uh, my wife's from here, so I resigned from that and started Pax Financial Group with a couple guys. I guess that's about 17 or 18 years ago now. 17 or 18 years ago. So you're a co-founder with two other guys. Correct. Yeah, we bought well, one out amicably. Well, um, okay. And now we've spread out ownership amongst employees. So there's a lot of employee ownership now. And how many employees do you guys have? 25. 25. So the company is a pretty, you know, it's a small company. Is that what you consider? It's a small company, but it's a good size for a small company, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, it's small. Um, and I guess it depends on who you're talking to, right? Yeah, but right. Um, we're definitely in the small business category. Absolutely. And what you said about um, the foundation, foundation, I've never lived in a home without a foundation. And that's something most of us take completely for granted. It's something we would never even looked at because we never had the experience of, I think I've been to a, a mobile home uh, neighborhood maybe once or twice. So that's not something that you, but you having that experience and, and thinking about, you want to have a house with a foundation. Do you finally have a house with a foundation now? It's a big foundation. <laughs> and I don't say that. I say that kind of tongue in cheek because the first, it was hilarious. The first, so this is our third house since I've been married. And the first two houses, um, the foundation leaked. So we had water. It didn't leak. There, the water would come in between our foundation and our house. So both houses flooded. Wow. So this third house that I got, I know foundations is a part of my life, right? It's scriptural. Yeah, that's never um, happened to me or anybody I know. <laughs> twice, twice. And, and um, it's unbelievable. But so this next house I got, um, which is beautiful. We have a family of six, fits all of us. The ho- the foundation I made sure was absolutely ginormous. So that was important. If you pulled up to your house, you'd say, yeah, that's about a five foot foundation. So I was wow. very much made sure that we had a good foundation at this point in my life. Wow, that's interesting. Something most of us never think about. That's yeah. literally the last thing in my, on my mind when I, I look at my house or look at a house. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'll be more aware of it now. It'll be like, is that a good foundation? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. It's, hey, I could do, I guess I could do a sermon on that. That you just spark something. Maybe another yeah, book. Maybe, maybe another sure. book on that one, right? Yeah, because I tend to look at the roof. Like, is the roof? <laughs> yeah. I, never think of the I know, right? But man, if water gets in there, it's – it's. what the problem was is it ruined our peace because we'd patch it and get it fixed. That was not uncommon where we'd fix it. But then every time it rained, my wife wouldn't have peace. And I was like, man, I want my wife to enjoy the rain. She just couldn't enjoy the rain because she's like, oh, water's going to come in. So that was a big part of it. It was robbing our peace. Yeah, um, dreading it. This is this is all symbolic ministry stuff. I can see it right here. Foundation, peace. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, don't you already use that? Yeah, oh, not yet. You just gave yet. me an idea though, right? Okay, is, yeah. yeah. That's a very unique angle. Um, so many things that we take for granted that, <laughs> you know, other people, it's like the focus of, you know, yeah. it's been the focus of their life at one point or the other. It's quite interesting. And- when did you decide, um, I'm assuming, and based on our previous conversation, it looks like, and the fact that you are part of C12, 
God is number one in your business. At what point did you guys, I say guys, because I know you have a co-founder. Um, I, I'm assuming that your co-founder is also a Christian. Am I right? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And at what point did you guys decide to make uh, your faith um, God the center of your business? There's been a lot of inflection points. I, I would say it was more gradual than maybe it should have been. But I, there was one inflection point that I think was important. I did these videos. We had this thing called Giving Challenge. They're on YouTube. And we um, gave a chunk of money to our employees and told our employees to go give it to nonprofits in the community. And we filmed it. It was really cool. And so they got to enjoy the experience of giving. And, and I, I just thought it was an excellent way to not only encourage them, but also to encourage other small businesses to do the same. So we did it. And the first time I filmed the video, got a great feedback. I glorified God, which was something that is in my nature. But one of my clients, because not all my clients are Christians, she came up to me. She said, you know, the video was great. You're doing good work in the community. But the whole God thing was a little bit overdone. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, I don't want to offend anyone. So the next video I did, I took God out. And I know that sounds like, what are you thinking? You're a Christian. I don't know why I took God out. And I was like, I don't want to offend anyone. So did the next giving video. And, um, and when I was done, I watched and I was like, what did I do? And the whole idea Denied of being Christ. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I mean, I mean, I mean, I felt like horrible. So this lukewarm thing came to me and just silliness, silliness. And so at that point I was like, okay, you know what? I can't be lukewarm. And, um, we, we reconstructed our mission statement, our vision, um, what we do, how we do things. And we, I just said, forget it. I'm going to offend people. I'm just going to go all in for Christ. And so that's what we did. That's very common though. I mean, that it happened to me as well when I became a Christian, which was only a few years ago, 2020 and got serious about it only about 2023. Um, when I started talking about Jesus, um, I noticed when I would say God, it wasn't that much. The, the minute I said Jesus, I got a lot of pushback. It's crazy. And then I was like, I took a step back and I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. No, it feels like. We... But then I did like you. I'm like, wait, I'm denying Jesus to please mm -hmm. people. What am I doing? Yeah. No. Yeah. And then I just like publicly profess so much that <laughs> I've gotten people message me about how are you so bold? You inspire me. I'm like, well, I'm just <laughs> so you're right. You it's just harder. It's harder to be forked tongue. In fact, it's, it's, it, it, it weighed on me. It was heavy and it was, it was a little bit hypocritical because, yeah. um, you know, I was definitely a believer in one space in my life, but there are areas in your work life it accounts for a lot of hours yeah. and to disconnect Christ from the, that workplace, it was a little bit of a hypocrisy. I was a different person. Yes. So I think there's been freedom and there, and scripture supports this. There's, we talk about taking hold of the life that is truly life. There's freedom when you follow Christ and you kind of get rid of this lukewarm mentality. And, yeah. um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm pleased that God did that work on me. How how long ago did this shift occur? Um, I'm thinking it was like four, maybe four or five years ago. Okay, yeah, okay. it was about that. Um, the reason I'm there, there was a time we almost sold. There's several other pieces in there, but like we almost sold a big company. Big company came along. They wanted to be in Texas, and they said, "Daryl, we'd like to buy you guys." And so. I said, okay, if you give me a number that's just a stupid number, I'll consider it. And they came back with a stupid number. So I called my mom up and I said, mom, guess how much they're offering me to, to sell? And I told her and she goes, boy, you better sell, you know, trailer <laughs> park. Like you better get rid of this. So we went, so I, this company, very big company went through all the due diligence process and they dug in all of our documents. We give them access to all the documents and they, they came back their their attorneys and said, we like your firm, but you, you talk a little bit too much about God in your firm and you know, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to fly going forward. And I thought about it and this again, it's kind of a culmination. I was like, yep. Um, I can't, I can't sell because that's just not going to be me. So that's, I backed out of the cell and I'm praise God. With and all it just, that money on the table, you backed uh -huh. out. I backed out and it, I just reinf it reinforced the mission and the vision and what we're doing. It just kind of like gave me new fuel to say, you know what? I'm all in for God. And I, 
and no regrets. Oh, amen. See, that is what most Christians, unfortunately, would not do because we, many of us have not gotten to that place where we are. We've been following, taking advice from the world for too long. The world has told us that it's not cool to mix your faith and your business because you're going to offend somebody. It looks unprofessional and you may look like an idiot or a Jesus freak. And I think they kind of beat that out of us, right? I, uh, a lot of Christians just compartmentalize everything, kind of like what you were saying previously. You know, this is my church on Sundays, my church life. I talk about Jesus in my private life, but when it comes to business, I got to completely take that out because that's just not acceptable by the world. Because if if I am if I do that, I'm going to lose clients. I'm going to lose money. I'm going to lose face. I'm going to my reputation. You know, and everybody has their own, everybody hopefully gets to a point where they, 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 their conscience, because God gave us a conscience, right? Their conscience, it clashes with their conscience. And hopefully, you know, they will not let the world override what they're supposed to do. Because then when you fall into the lukewarm status, what you're going to hear when you die is depart from me. I never knew you. It's it's right. unbelievable, and and it, you, you mentioned conscience, which really means, uh, by definition, with knowledge. And so we have the knowledge of a creator, and um, whenever we disconnect, we just our mind and our soul, and um, we we know, we know, we know, yeah, um, mm. we know. But it's been uh, it, there comes a point where many people would have chosen that money. I can imagine that it was probably a really serious, like you said, stupid amount of money. I don't know yeah. a whole lot of people that would decline that, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's important. It, I'll never get an offer like that again, I don't think. <laughs> um, well, I say that because the uh, you measure in business a multiple, like they put a multiplier times earnings, and the multiplier that was offered times earnings, it was at, the, at a peak in the marketplace, and so I don't, I don't suggest that that peak, that multiple will ever occur again. But that's, man, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm really, I, I'm really enthusiastic. You know, there's not a better place to be um, in life when you have a work that has purpose and you're doing it for the glory of God. And I'm making a good living, and um, I'm having fun, and I know that um, God is being glorified along the journey. Yeah, because your goal is to he to hear the words, well done, faithful servant. I think that's yeah. how it goes. I'm well missing done. a word there. Good and faithful. Yeah, Good, good and faithful. faithful servant. That's what you want to hear. That's um, right. There's yeah. nothing scarier than to think mm -hmm. that, to hear that, depart from me, worker of iniquity, or or, or I never yeah. knew you. That That's scary oh. because once you get there, there's no going back. So that's a great you know, point. we have to think about that. Um, of course you did that knowing that your rewards are in heaven, that the things in this world pass away. Um, you know, there's, it's just an illusion the thing, the money in your bank, the digits in your bank account, the material things that you accumulate here. Yes, they do make your life more comfortable here, but they pass away. And the only thing of true value is the, it, your eternal life, your, your spirit, right? That's right. Yeah. So I love the idea of you mentioned that um the kind of that fear element that exists when you don't walk um align with his will. And I think that's missing a lot today. The idea, you know, we kind of have this image in, of Jesus being kind of almost like a creepy stained glass with a person mm -hmm. with a lamb. Um mm -hmm. and we forget about the God in the Old Testament, at least the characterization of God that that does have jealousy mm -hmm. and and so we've disconnected this idea of fear and i'm not talking about like scary spooky it's clown reverence. Fear. reverence reverence right and so the idea i do fear my lord and and it's a very healthy just like i kind of want my four kids to fear me in a right. reverent way and and that's not lost on me and i believe that um what you said is very important yes and i think it all boils down to uh, people just don't know the Bible. Not even most Christians, I think, read their Bibles. Um, no. Because when you're not in the Word, I know that before I started reading the Bible and getting to know and, and studying the Bible and being in the Word, I was biblically illiterate. 
Mm-hmm. And when you don't have that knowledge, you will not have that fear. You will, you will only hear what the world says. Oh, Jesus was a hippie type of dude and we're all going to go to heaven and we're all God's children. I recently learned that's not true. We're not all God's, we are not all God's children. Only some of us are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but the world out there thinks they're all God's children. They're all going to go to heaven and they can continue their lives without repenting and turning away from sin and what that means. Um, you know, I think it's, there's a big part of it is the church. A lot of our churches, you know, are giving a diluted message, diluted message. And, um, We've removed God from school. We've removed God from everything. And so as a result, um, most people, there are a lot of people out there here in this country where the average amount of Bibles that a household has is four, three or four. A lot of people here have not heard the message of the gospel. So, you know, that's, I think we as a whole have lost uh, fear of God. We do not, we, we've created a God that we feel comfortable with this cosmic teddy bear, right? Oh, I can be, you know, read crystals and tarot and the universe and this and that. And we, we, God is gracious, but time does run out. I wouldn't want to mess with him. I really wouldn't. I I just I fear him, but I love him at the same time. So yes. it's very healthy. And I just wouldn't want to play games with God and play games with um, my my life, my future life, and my gener- the generations after me. I just wouldn't want to mess with it. Your salvation, yeah, because yeah. it's a generational thing as well. And so, regarding your work, um, because you do have some Judeo Christian. Uh, your your uh, Judeo Christian principles in your company, and you did mention that not all of your clients are Christians. Um, you serve you know people wherever they come from. Um, now, for those clients of yours who are Christians, um, do Christians invest in, in a different way than those who are not Christians? Uh, do you offer products that are specifically uh, geared or cater? Christian people. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you asked. And I guess this is a little bit of a shameless plug, but I just recently wrote a book on this biblical responsible investing and it dives into deeper than I will be able to. So that's why I want to share it for those people who want to know more about it, but it's called biblical responsible investing. And so if some Christians, not all of them have a conviction to think about the companies that they own differently and it really comes in a maybe two or three categories. They want to avoid companies that are doing things that are antithetical to biblical worldview. <clears throat> um, they want to embrace companies that are doing things to support a biblical worldview or at least do good in the world. Um, that could be just medically, just, you know, whether that's um, a treatment of Alzheimer's, that, that, that's considered something that's doing good for the world and, and allowing the world to flourish. So some of them want to avoid companies that could be alcohol, tobacco, or even companies that are trying to suppress religious freedoms. They want to avoid those types, investing in those types of companies. They want to embrace companies that are doing well. And the third category is sometimes they want to play a role in the advocacy, meaning they want to be able to to use their voice as a shareholder and say, I disagree with that. And there's a pathway to do that. So we're seeing more and more and more and more Christians start to say, we want this and we um, have created a platform for people to be able to do that well. Okay. So what, for example, I've heard that, you know, you could be accidentally investing in companies that use resources for, uh, that have used, um, how would I say, uh, slave, slave labor type of yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. b- b- being able to track, I'm not sure how they track that, but figuring out which kind of companies, I would imagine companies that have anything to do with cell phones might not be something that you want to invest because they use slave labor, you know? It's really tricky, but, you know, technology is amazing now. There's artificial intelligence and algorithms that can scrub websites and and track. Like there was this one – 
there was this one D, the DNA testing company. They do DNA tests, and which is like all cool because you can check your ancestry and all that stuff. But this DNA tester, they um, also sold DNA tests to the Chinese gov- Communist Party, in which the Chinese Communist Party used this test to um, to I don't know what you call it, but it's to uh, then medically prevent these specifically groups of people to have children. So you would test them. Okay, you fall into this category. We're now going to give you some medicine so you can't have children. They were doing that in China. And this company, this cute DNA company in Ancestry.com was killing it financially, but they were also selling these tests to China. So one of the companies – so it's hard to see that sometimes. So one of the companies that um, are in this kind of this Christian investment category, um, they – Collectively, they used their proxy vote and called up the DNA test company and said, hey, we know you're doing this and we want you to stop. The DNA test company said, no, we're not going to stop. But a few months later, they did. Now, we won't know for sure if there was a connection between that phone call to tell them to stop and that this DNA testing company actually stopped. They actually stopped selling to China. They actually did that in January this year. But we believe that there was some advocacy that took place that worked. And so it's that type of thing that's starting to happen in the marketplace. That's one of many examples of how doing Christian investing actually allows a degree of advocacy to say, you know what, Target or whoever, you can't do that anymore. We disagree with that. And that voice has been silent for way too long. And now a lot of Christians through their investments are starting to influence the marketplace differently. Right, right. Because Christians hadn't been investing any in any other, it was the same the way a Christian invested in a secular person invested. There was no difference. And mm-hmm. it's a good thing that people are starting to wake up and think about, wait a minute, where's my money going? You know, how am I using my money? Christians with lots of resources and wealth, you know, what can I do that can actually make an impact for God's kingdom? Another thing that I find lacking in our Christian community is that the lack of unity, you know? Um, so people are starting to wake up and making different choices. And, uh, that is super encouraging, especially when I see, you know, you would never think of a financial services company <laughs> has anything to do with, you know, Jesus or whatever, but we, it, it's time that we start to what they call normalize, right? Talking about faith and not letting the world tell us Christians what to do and making it okay and being enabled and being willing to accept the consequences of what might be. I've lost clients. I had to literally dump (laughs) all my clients that were in the new age only last year because I was convicted that even though it wasn't me performing witchcraft or anything, I could not use my skills and talents to um, help them promote it. So Mm -hmm. those were hard conversations I had to have. And I've, you know, you just have to, you have to make it the hill you're willing to die on. And when you think of that, then it doesn't hurt so bad. But I wanted to ask you about, um, so what in your, first of all, how do you, do you in any way in your company help spread the gospel? Do you uh, hire, um, do you have any like um, initiatives to spread the gospel um, or do you do it personally? What do you do in your life as far as spreading the good news of the gospel? That's a great point. A um, couple um, well, one story real quick. I, I love sharing Jesus Christ with others and I, nothing will stop me from doing that. I did have a situation that made me pause, um, but I but I reflected. And so one of our top clients, um, I built a good rapport with him. We had walked life together. His brother had died and it really hurt him and I just was there for him. And, and so he, he we, we became friends. Um, so I felt like there was this friendship level that um, that I could talk to him a little bit more intimately. So I took him to lunch. He's a devout atheist. And I told him about Jesus Christ. Um, and I just felt he needed it. And it wasn't, but two days later he fired me and I would do it again. 
was he angry? And did you, was he noticeably angry when you told him about Jesus Christ? Like when you were more, talking sto- to him? more stoic than angry. Okay. Um, but he, but he always had that demeanor anyway. So it wasn't, I didn't catch <sighs> that. Right. I didn't catch it at all. And I tend to, I tend to pick up on those clues, but right. didn't catch it at all. He fired me, but I would not do I would, I would do it again. And so again, one of our top clients. So I was like, man, would I do it again? And I would. So we have 10 advisors here that, and then two, we have a 401k specialist and a group insurance. They're frontline people. And for them, to, they, they, have, they, they have free reign to share the gospel. Not all of them have convictions like I do. Some of them, it's, they're just as fire and some of them are just you know, still, you know, still on their journey. Um, but what, one of the things that we do is we measure hope. Because one of the things that we want to do is give people hope in the midst of all this noise, economic noise, moral relevancy, corruption, everything that we're seeing in the news. And so we do measure hope. We actually have in our office a gong where people hit a gong and celebrate the hope that we give. And then we record those transactions of hope. And that could include uh, introducing somebody to Jesus. It could be the restoration of marriage. It could be sending people to kids to college. It could be paying off debt. It could be retirement. So that's really the lane that we're in most passionately is giving people hope and then ultimately leading them to the true source of hope of Jesus Christ. Yes, absolutely. And there is a component. Wow. That you, that a longtime client fired you, but you know what? You did your job, what was required of you and you planted a seed. Mm-hmm. That may not germinate today, tomorrow, but you never know, 10 years down the road. Mm-hmm. But he had, he heard it from you when you did your job. And it's, it's not our job to convince people to yeah. convert them. It is our job to spread the message. And it is up to the Holy Spirit to, to for us to be vessels and allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit to work through us. That's what right. happens from there on, but you did what you were supposed to do so so proud of you for doing that. That's what we all need to do, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be willing to put it all on the line for Jesus. If you truly believe what you believe, if you truly believe what the Bible says, then you have to be willing to put it all on the line for knowing that he's always got your back. You know, that's where our faith comes in, right? Our faith comes in. Our faith is tested in situations like that where you're going to lose money. You're going to be fired. You're like, it's tough, but it's worth it. I do it again myself. It's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. There's been, you know, just, I love, I I hope that your audience is catching that my journey has been an ebb and flow of, of hesitation and pauses and, and, you know, fumbles along the way and but it's always just kind of leaning into him and trusting him and doing it in a very um kind of awkward way along the journey but but it's always in a in with a heart of just saying god i love you i'm afraid of you to a certain degree but i love you right and i want to walk in your will i'm going to abide in you i want right. to i want to i want to experience what does it mean to have the fruit of the spirit love joys peace patience, kindness, generosity, self-control, not for my own well-being, but for those around me that are struggling, that are, uh, that are hopeless, that are insecure, that, that yes. really need you. Yes, because it's not a straight shot. It's a journey. It's a process. It's a yeah. refining, right? And, and, and it takes time. You know, I had to it start does. with cursing. I was such a potty mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I try hard and then I, Uh, mess up and I go back. It's like that. Whatever your problem is, it's going to take some time and God knows that, but it's where your heart is. What's in your heart? Is it sincere? It's not about saying sorry, knowing that you're going to go right back to do the same thing just to say, I'm sorry again. The only true apology is change behavior or that you're making sincere attempts to change that behavior. And God knows when it's sincere because he knows what's in your heart. That's right. Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, God, there was something else I was going to ask you right quick, but I guess um, of what you said is beautiful. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that um, for everybody out there who is um, wanting to make their business a kingdom business, a kingdom outpost, and part of what you want to do is spread the gospel. There are many ways to do it, but to start to lose that fear of man when spreading the gospel, you know what I started to do? And (laughs) I literally... I literally would go in person out to a parking lot and go to people and tell them, has anyone ever told you that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for you? Like complete and total strangers looking at me like, 
<laughs> and then I told him, if you were to die right now, how sure you go to heaven on a scale of one to five. And some people will tell me to go kick rocks and some people will listen. And then I tell them what the Bible says. And then I tell them if they want to accept Jesus, say this prayer with me right now. And, and it, it, it burns at the beginning, but it's a desensitization. And once you can do that, right, once you can go up to a stranger's face, <laughs> I, I'm still blown away that you did that. You told me that in our last call and I was like, holy smokes, that's oh, yeah. amazing. I've done I love it, it close to 40 times now. <laughs> Praise God. That's amazing. So cool. And so it'll make you lose that fear, which will make it easier for you to be able to do that in any other uh, yeah. circumstance that you're in. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take the edge off, right? Yeah. So that's what I recommended. If anybody wants the soul winning script that I have from my pastor, I am it's free. I'm happy to send it to you. Um, so just contact me at hello at francinesinclair.com or you can find me on LinkedIn, Francine Sinclair, or also, I'm also on Facebook. Um, awesome. So Daryl, how can people find you? How can they contact you if they want to know more about your company or they just want to find out about your book? Yeah, so... Um that latest books, Biblical Responsible Investing, is is on all the major retailers. I also have a podcast, Retire in Texas, so they can follow kind of financial commentary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, LinkedIn's not bad. Okay, um, I along. connect a lot on LinkedIn. A lot of commentary. It's very professional for me, so I prefer LinkedIn. And then, yes, uh, my company's website's Pax Financial Group, P A X. So those okay. are about four different ways. Wonderful. And Daryl is with two R's, D-A-R-R-Y-L, Daryl yeah. Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S. You can find him. I think he's the only one on LinkedIn with that name, so you should be able to find him quite easily. And so is there anything else you wanted to let us know? Where are you going with your company? Are you guys, you know, what what do you have planned for 2024? Your company, excited about anything? Yeah, we're excited about a ton. You know, we need to grow. Um, we've got quite a mission field here and um but we're not taking any outside capital so we're using our current cash flow to add advisors so we're going to look for talented advisors um and we will um continue to lean into what god is um doing he's he, it, it's already blown me away the first part of the year what he's done so i'm just curious to see what he's going to do the rest of the year it's just been so much fun already keep pressing it and do you work with people uh, nationwide or yeah or, nationwide or, okay yeah. so anywhere in the u.s yeah. Can contact Daryl. We're military city, so a lot of clients moved outside of even the state. So if they've got Zoom, we can do a financial review in, in pajamas. So Okay. Yeah, no no <laughs> with, problem. With your shirt on and your pajamas. <laughs> yeah, just keep your shirt on. That's all we ask. That's all you ask. Perfect. So you guys heard it here on the Influential Christian Entrepreneur, Daryl Lyons. If you want to find out more about him, go check him out on LinkedIn. I'm going to put those links on uh, the description of this podcast. And I want to thank everybody for listening today. We will be back next Tuesday with another amazing Influential Christian Entrepreneur. But before we leave, I want to say thank you, Daryl, and God bless you yeah, thank for... You for doing what you do. And I, you know, I just want to let everybody know that he is a really good example of how to make God number one in your business and in your life, because it's not just about your personal life, but your business as well, because our business after all, our businesses as Christians are really ministries as well. So <laughs> oh, 100%, 100%. Absolutely. That's the way we all have to see it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Daryl. And take care. God bless everybody. Thank you. Blessings. If you're a Christian business leader or executive, I invite you to work with me to create a faith-driven personal brand on LinkedIn that will empower you to navigate the intersection between faith and business. Feel free to contact me directly at hello at francinesinclair.com. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow me, Francine Sinclair, on Facebook or LinkedIn. See you next week for a new episode.